Uh, can you give me a green shot if you can hear me? Yep. Okay, then I'm looking like we're getting a few here. All right. Thank you for joining us for this session of what did I just record? Yes. Okay, we're ready to go. Sorry about that. Thank you for joining us for this session of the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series. The series is designed to help K-12 educators reimagine education with Blackboard's teaching and learning solutions. The K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series harnesses the power of our K-12 community of academic leaders, teachers, and other experts to provide relevant, real-time, and on-demand and ongoing professional development opportunities for K-12 educators. My name is Katie Gallagher, and I'm the Director of Solutions Marketing for K-12 for Teaching and Learning. Uh, thank you to Jenny Weiser, who's joining us from our field marketing team, and will help answer questions in the chat today. We'll be serving as your moderators for this series this spring. We're always open to new ideas for topics. We'll be planning the fall session soon, so please let us know if there's a topic you'd like to see or you have an interest in presenting for a future session. You can always email me at katie.gallagher at blackboard.com. Um, each webinar in the series is recorded, as you know, so you can search for the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series playlist on our Blackboard TV YouTube channel, or just go to the link that I just placed in the chat just now. Um, you could also, you'll also receive this recording and the presentation slides in a few days after the webinar by email. You'll be receiving an invitation to participate in an online PLC as well. So please accept this participation. It's designed to encourage ongoing uh, collaboration and dialogue. As you can see, we're wrapping up the spring series, but we've got a lot of great sessions left. left. Um, please join us on Monday for blending, a recipe for engaging in rigorous math instruction with Danira Flores and Philip Dees from Lawrence Public Schools. You can always go to bbb.blackboard.com slash k12bits to register for Monday session or any session in the upcoming series. Um, if you haven't done so already, we've got a star of the BBK12 Live app presenting for us today, Jason Byler from Metro National Public Schools. He's on this uh, image of the iPhone right here presenting at BB World uh, last summer. So be sure to get the app. Every session in the series is found on the app, um, as well as um, the Best of Blackboard World last summer. So we're very pleased to introduce Jason Byler from Metro National Public Schools today. He's presenting on Breaking the Mold, Blending Professional Development with Blackboard Learn. Blending learning and personalization are two extremely popular buzzwords currently cycling through the realm of education. Many teachers uh, have experienced Blackboard Learn as a student in an undergraduate or graduate level or online course. They have often been exposed to a few of the basic learn tools, but often have not worked with many of the Blackboard features. In order to help provide ideas and inspiration for teachers who use Blackboard Learn in a K-12 blended environment, this session will focus on breaking the mold of traditional sit and get tech training to provide a more flexible model, blended models, and strategies using Blackboard Learn. These blended trains can help teachers not only learn how to build in Blackboard Learn, but model effective blended strategies in the process. After completing his bachelor's degree in anthropology, Mr. Jason Byler began his 14-year teaching career in the Mississippi Delta at Shaw High School in Shaw, Mississippi. After two years, he moved to Nashville to take a social studies position at Antioch High School, where he spent the last 12 years developing instruction that utilizes technology to push the boundaries of the traditional classroom. In striving to make connections with his students and to foster higher levels of learning, he began to infuse his classroom with lessons that integrated technology in a variety of innovative ways. Among his pursuits, digital storytelling, back channeling, and creating his own blended learning environments have enabled him to challenge his students and extend the learning environment. He moved from a single computer classroom with tape recorders and a video camera to the use of digital document cameras, webcams, mobile computer labs, and a cart of iPads and student mobile devices. 
by creating his own web pages, utilizing the Exploring Minds network, developing, historically speaking, a five-year blended experiment with me, and incorporating Blackboard, Jason has worked to develop a classroom that's conducive to collaboration, creativity, and communication while meeting the challenges of the 21st century classroom. He's an award-winning teacher being selected twice as the Teacher of the Year at Antioch and was last year awarded the General Education Teacher of the Year at the Academy of Nashville Awards. He facilitated a professional development concerning the innovative use of technology in the classroom at both the school and the district level. We are so pleased to have Jason with us today. He's a terrific presenter. He's demonstrated that more than once. And so we're really thrilled to have him. And we thank you all for taking time out of your day. Uh, before I hand it over to Jason, just a couple housekeeping items. Uh, we are recording the session, but we want to keep it very interactive. So please use the chat. And you are more than welcome to use your talk button or speak up. But we do, for the clarity of the recording, ask that you have your talk button off or mute your line unless you are um, speaking up so that we can have a high quality recording. So with that, I'll hand it over to Jason. And Jason, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Katie. Thanks for the introduction. And I'm just really excited to be here uh, to share just experience and, and talk about ways to start blending with teachers. Um, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and move into the presentation. I want to say if you have not been to Blackboard World uh, participants, I would definitely suggest uh, get to Blackboard World. We, we have learned so much by participating in that experience, and uh, it's translated into just a, a variety of learning for teachers in our district, uh, the stuff we brought back. So definitely check that out. And also, as Katie mentioned, please type your questions uh, in the chat, ask away. Um, you know, feel free to stop us because we really want this to be interactive and to be a discussion as much as possible. Uh, and uh, we'll just go ahead and get started. So, like I said, uh, feel free to jump in at any time. Now, uh, this breaking the mold, blending PD with Blackboard, it's, it's, you know, I don't know if there really is a mold, but, uh, you know, as a teacher, uh, like I said, uh, as the bio kind of introduced, 14 years in the classroom, I, I've been through a lot of different PDs. And um, I since uh, have left the classroom and joined uh, the MNPS Learning Technology Department. And uh, I'm an instructional designer now who works with high schools typically, but our job is always kind of radically changing as we try to meet the demands to provide sort of inspiration and training for teachers to start really using the tools such as Blackboard uh, to blend their instruction, to personalize instruction. Um, I think as, as we go through uh, the session agenda here, I, I really, one thing I want you to think about is this. Uh, definitely, my perspective has changed somewhat uh, by moving out of the classroom. You know, I, 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 as mentioned before, I had a lot of success with students. And I think you're always trying to find ways to get students to jump into learning. Um, and when I took this job, I, I knew I would be working with adults. And uh, our, our team is just a fantastic team. And we're really a great collaborative group and, and really trying to figure out ways to provide blended training for teachers and to help them uh, sort of bridge the gap between wherever they're at and where they want to go is, is, is challenging. It's, it's just like teaching. You know, everyone has their own issues and stories and, and, and a variety of factors influence what they're doing. So uh, it's, it's a really interesting to see how uh, teachers at the district level now, uh, in working with them, to try to find solutions, oftentimes they need to be engaged. They need to find something that sort of inspires them to jump in. So from this, uh, I would definitely say that, you know, it's, it's sort of like anything else. You know, it kind of always boils back down to great teaching. So we kind of leave with that a lot of times when we're doing PD. If you're a trainer in your district or, uh, or if you're a teacher, and just as you go through the rest of today, um, if you have questions, obviously, like I said, jump in. But just know that as a district, uh, Metro National Public Schools has been on an incredible journey. Uh, we definitely are learning more about blended learning and what that means for us and our students. And, uh, you know, whatever you can take back, you know, it may be you sharing with colleagues or it may be you actually leading PD with colleagues or maybe you're leading PD for the district. Um, 
you know, obviously, if you have interest, interesting perspectives to share, we'd love to hear those as well. But we are definitely learning as a district, and we are evolving. And so that's kind of where we'll uh, get, get started. So the things that we're going to share definitely are, are more a few keys to success. As you can kind of see here, we have uh, blended journey. Uh, there's a little bit of a catalyst story that I'll go through really quickly. And there are some key factors for success. These are factors for us that, that really help sort of start moving the needle, and we're always looking to try to continue that. And uh, then we'll talk about what we actually did to start making some of this happen. And we're, I'm also going to talk about some of the roadblocks. And you know them, you're aware of them, you definitely run into contact with these when you start talking about using technology and using Blackboard and, and blending learning. You know, there are all sorts of uh, glass, uh, half-empty uh, sort of opinions out there. And I think you know, what we've tried to do is really reframe those and, and try to have a glass half full, glass exploding full mentality. Um, so we'll definitely get into that. So a little bit of background on Metro Nashville. Uh, we're the 42nd largest school district in the country. Our high schools are in career thematic academies, and uh, which has really been fantastic here. And we have about 82,000 students in over 100, 120 countries represented. So we're a very diverse urban school district. And it's just an awesome place to work and teach and learn. All right, so let's move on. Now, uh, just uh, uh, in in kind of moving into this uh, this presentation, you know, I really one of the things we always deal with with teachers is when we start talking about you know, they're coming to a blended training and uh, they're, they want to learn more about blended learning and, and personalizing learning. And, you know, one of the first things I think we all have our own experience. And our own experience definitely hits us and, and provides a, a frame for us to, you know, kind of think, look at the world. And for me, you know, as a teacher, you know, going back even as a student, uh, let's start there. You know, I can remember going back to fourth grade and, and being excited to do my homework because I knew I would be able to use a computer in my teacher's classroom. And it's really simple, but but that was engaging me as a learner, uh, even if it was just a motivating little factor. Uh, computers have always kind of fascinated me, so as I started to teach, obviously that was something that I wanted to use. Um, but as I moved through college, um, I, again, I have a background in anthropology. I, I wasn't exposed to too much. Uh, I had a few classes that were online classes, and uh, as I moved into more grad school classes, I was super fortunate to have a professor they kind of was all one song that, that got popular. And I think that was a, a just a great experience. Uh, Dr. Marino Alvarez at Tennessee State University, he, he, was, he was basically teaching grad school in a blended environment. And I think that helped uh, definitely frame a reference. So um, as a teacher, I started very small uh, building with uh, basic code on Netscape Compo Composer to using a variety of other tools until Metro Nashville Public Schools purchased Blackboard, a contract with Blackboard. This is our third year of a contract with Blackboard. And I, I'm not sure about the other districts that are out there or the other uh, institution, institutions that are out there, but anytime you shift into some new, uh, a new piece of software, there's always learning. There's always a, a lot of learning to go on. And, and Blackboard, we kind of always say, is a cat lack of learning management systems. And, and when we start to show teachers this, it's, it's sometimes overwhelming. Uh, but that's that's part of the thing that we started to take into account as we move forward. But in trying, in, in shifting away from traditional teaching methods, one of the things that um, you know I think any teacher is interested in is the very first day students walk into your classroom. You've got this little this distraction of a moment to try to hook them. You've got to try to get them to take a risk in learning. I think every teacher is trying to search for that that hook that that gets students to take that step off the cliff and jump into this, this learning experience. And um, really, blended learning, I know I may be preaching to the choir, is just a fantastic way to, to hook students into learning. And the, the fact that we live in this Xbox generation, PlayStation generation uh, of kids, it's, teachers need every bit of ammunition they can uh, in order to, to grab that attention. And so, you know, really, you know, students will go on in, in, in an Xbox, in a game online, and they'll, they'll literally uh, do almost anything they can to get an achievement, even if it means dragging a barrel across the screen to another part of the screen, 
you know, there's something motivating about that. And I know there's a lot of studies and gamification is really hot right now. Um, but there's something to that. So just sort of playing the game can definitely create some engagement. Um, for me as a teacher, blended learning without a doubt allowed me to take what my average class size was about 35 a, a class, sometimes 40. Uh, to be able to break that down, for me, getting students in smaller groups was a key strategy. And uh, I was able to do that by using uh, Blackboard and, and other vehicles online. So without a doubt, that's a, a key change with Blended is to try to create some one-on-one -on -one time. Now, the other thing, too, that, that is kind of key is just patience, persistence, modeling, uh, there's some things that we're going to go back to and uh, kind of over and over again, and really not allowing students to fail. Uh, they're really key in making sure that you can have success with students. Uh, you can't treat these experiments like they're, oh, I'm going to try this once, and if it, if it doesn't work, I'm just not going to go back to it. Uh, you really got to be persistent, especially as you're learning something like Blackboard Learn. Um, ultimately, uh, Blackboard Sirs is such a robust location uh, tool for teachers to be able to launch blended learning experiences. Uh, as a district, we, we sort of had a challenge to try to break down what Blackboard could do for teachers. So let's uh, let's take a look at what kind of started the the, the catalyst for us moving forward. Um, when we initially got Blackboard, we uh, challenged, actually, sort of mandated teachers. Um, who are teaching advanced placement courses and international baccalaureate to build courses. And uh, we started that in the first year. Every AP teacher in the district and every IB teacher in the district was charged with building their course and teaching out of the Blackboard Learn. The, our, our early trainings in the district were focused mostly on teaching people how to build. I mean, we were learning about Blackboard Learn. We were learning how to manipulate it and how to use it. And so a lot of the trainings provided focused on building skills. We, um, at that time, were, were mo most interested in just getting people in there and starting to you know, build an environment and, and show them what Blackboard could do. We really tried to show them almost everything Blackboard could do. And that's one of the things that I would say moving forward that we're, that we're changing now. Um, but the catalyst really for us was uh, uh, a year and a half ago, our um, our, my boss, uh, Dr. Keisha Ray, she's the Director of Learning Technology in Metro Nashville Public Schools, uh, she, she challenged our department to create a training for teachers through Blackboard. And uh, a, a program was developed where every teacher in the district, this is 6,000 teachers roughly, um, would go through a training. We've never done anything like this. Uh, we, we created what was called all-star training, the menu is kind of before you on the screen here. And what it was was a very basic training. It had eight modules and some of the key uh, district initiatives. For teachers who had been in the district a long time, these were, these were basically things uh, that they'd known before, but this was sort of like a reorientation to the district, an updating of what all are we doing in this district. So we have a district strategic improvement plan, technology essentials, uh, the learning platform. Uh, common Core, Blended Learning Environments, Online Assessment Readiness. And, and you can kind of see these were some key strategies that every teacher needed to know about. So we created a training that was self-paced. Uh, it was locked. You had to, there were competency-based quizzes at the end of each module. Uh, you'd launch the, you'd have to go through the training, answer the questions, and unlock the next module to move on. At the end of this training, you had a, an, lesson module eight was a unit planning module in which Teachers had to create a unit planning, a unit plan, and submit it uh, to the school district. And if they passed the, the training and turned in their unit plan, they everyone received the computer. So this was worked out with the district, and uh, in the end, it was a great success. And and it was it was a basic training, but what was really cool about that from us, for our, from our perspective, was it was the first time we used as a district uh, Blackboard to teach teachers. And I think it really started the discussion. Um, even though AP and IB teachers had been building their courses and using Blackboard a little bit, we still weren't getting a lot of traction with teachers. Um, and so 
a lot of people said, wow, that was really cool. I enjoyed that training. I could do this at my own, on my own time, at my own pace, uh, wherever I wanted to do it. Um, and it, it really hit on some of the hallmarks of some of the blended theory that we were trying to express with teachers. And uh, so after this all-star training, we started to get lots of hits on, you know, requests for PD on blended learning. And we had already been developing things and we have been working in schools. So uh, this, this was a catalyst though, moving forward for us. And our district definition of blended learning is just sort of going along with the national kind of idea right now. Uh, in the end, we're, we're saying that you've got to give students some control over the time, place, path, and or pace in which they learn. Whether it's, and that's going to be in part at school and in part uh, outside of school. You know, the, the old traditional way, uh, a lot of times teachers are like, hey, if you, you're going to learn this when you come to my classroom. You're going to uh, learn this in my classroom on, you know, at this day. Uh, the path you're going to take is uh, you're going to read the section and do the questions, and the pace is you have 30 minutes to do it. You know, that's kind of the old traditional way of doing things. And by using Blackboard and starting to teach teachers how to create a blended environment, we, we've really tried to put teachers in control of letting students have more control over these factors and fit into the version of blended that we're, we're prescribing to. Now, uh, we started this with an actual school, and, that, and, and our training methodology has shifted somewhat, partially due to experience. Like I said, we're continuing to learn. And uh, we started by building and then showing teachers how to build, and that's, that's sort of what happened here at Hunters Lane High School. Hunters Lane High School is a school that chose to go wall-to-wall -wall blended, and this was an in a movement from within the school. Teachers asked the principal uh, if they could do this, and um, in the last year and a half, they've been shifting uh, to whole staff blended, every teacher, every course in Blackboard. And uh, to make that transition, we had to do some training. And when we started doing the training, it was a, a full day of summer PD. There were follow-up sessions throughout the year, but this full day of summer PD was still focused on building Blackboard. And I think one of the one of the big things that we started to uh, realize was we had to provide teachers with with uh, with some more examples and some ideas of what this would actually look like. In fact, our initial pushback with some of the AP and IB teachers was, "Okay, you've taught me how to build, but what does this actually look like in a classroom?" And so, throughout the year at Hunters Lane, I, I spent the entire year working with the school and. Um, Meet with meeting with teachers and principals, and one of the one of the um, interesting there was a sort of a moment where we decided, you know what? Um, sometimes it's about doing it, and so instead of building things, we're going to actually focus on one thing: do it, reflect, and talk about what happened. So we decided to set up a special PD that's just focused on the discussion board or the tool in the classroom. We, every teacher went to the PD, we showed them how to use it, we showed best practice, and then um, we, we, we launched this. Uh, teachers had about four weeks to launch the activity in their classroom, however they wanted to do it, and they had to come back and share. And the discussion and the conversation kind of blew administrators away. They were really impressed by the feedback teachers gave and just how just starting to use the tools opened their eyes a little bit. So that was exciting, and, and as we shifted PD the next summer with Hunter's Lane, we actually started to uh, we, we we started to look at ways to provide alternative PD, uh, not not just sort of the sit and get PD we talked about earlier, and uh, that's where things really started to change. So, a couple of things that were working against us, and, and this is not on the screen. I, I don't have this on the slide, but there's some things to really consider. The typical challenges, and I know many of you face these, when you start asking teachers to build and say Blackboard, you know, one of the things that comes up is like, oh, Blackboard, I use that in college. And um, unfortunately, a lot of teachers' experience as students in Blackboard, um, it sometimes can, can sour them on using it in a, a K-12 setting. You know, we're used to the grad school mentality of, uh, Log in, post a discussion post to your uh, to to the group, and post on to other classmates, and and uh, read the articles, um, reflect, post on the other a few of your classmates, and then you know write a paper at the end of the week, and we start over again on Monday. Um, 
And, you know, when I talk to teachers about that, a lot of them are like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. And, and a lot of them are like, but I want to do that with my kids. And, and that's sort of where we started to say, then why are, you, why are you trying to do that? You know, Blackboard can do so much more. And, and as we started to think about this, we really started to say, listen, we need to start showing these teachers, you know, just what this might look like. Um, so as far as, uh, you know, their experience with Blackboard, many of them had professors and or, you know, classes that didn't use many of the tools and uh, certainly didn't get very creative with using Learn to create an environment that would be engaging, especially to a K-12 audience. So that's something to consider definitely is, is, is acknowledge that with your teachers and definitely start to uh, think about how, what, how you're going to make that look different. The next thing would be uh, the just student experience as a, in a blended classroom. Another question I always ask in trainings, I ask teachers, I'm, I'm like, okay, how many of you have been students in an awesome blended learning classroom? And to this day, I, I really haven't had anyone ever raise their hand. You know, I, like I mentioned one professor I had earlier, but, but that's one professor of all the teachers I ever had. So uh, unfortunately, a lot of teachers have never had the experience of being a student in an awesome, this engaging blended learning environment that we keep trying to tell them to create in their classrooms. I think that's a big disconnect for teachers. Uh, so being able to provide a PD that sort of models some of those things is, is definitely a step in the right direction. Next, you know, with, with Blackboard, of course, of course there's a learning curve. As a district, we initially tried to train teachers and kind of show them everything Blackboard could do. Well, we've since changed that. We've definitely shifted to um, picking a few of the key building blocks in Blackboard that we think will help them create a blended environment. So we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Uh, so just narrowing the focus. Just instead of learning everything, we've tried to narrow that focus for teachers. And lastly, like anything else, it's, it's routines and and basically getting teachers to, uh, even if they're uh, not, if they're not used to doing this, they, they've got to develop routines, they've got to be patient, they've got to be persistent, and they've got to understand that they have to be comfortable with Blackboard and or with, with their blended learning environment. So when they model for students, they're, they're able to help students. And so it just takes time. Now, I'm going to move into a few factors for success now. Um, App Hunters Lane, as I mentioned, you know, we had went through the first year, had training, which was the basic kind of build training. And like I said, we shifted to the discussion training. And then um, one, of the, one of the days I was, I was out there in the summer and we were doing a fairly normal training and it, teachers were struggling with it. You know, I just decided at lunch, you know, I we, I'm just going to flip things up here. I, I, they went to lunch. I, I very quickly with Blackboard built out three folders and added a few videos. And this was about adding a banner to your class or something simple. And um, when they came back, I, I put them in groups. They, they got uncomfortable. We, we, I said we're going to go through these rotations. And all I did was model a station rotation. And it was like the light bulb went off <laughs> over all their heads. It was, it was a really cool experience. And um, after that, you know, we started planning more intentionally about, you know, trying to make this a, a big part of what we were doing. So instead of just focusing on building, we focused on doing and, and actually experiencing the blended learning and then reflecting and, and, and for us as well, revising what we were doing with teachers. So we started to, in every training, provide overview of blended learning and lots of examples, and uh, whether it be video and or just modeling. Uh, still building in Blackboard, but a few key things, like I said earlier. And uh, we also were struggling with something that maybe some of you uh, have had issues with in the past, and that is when we first started to build in Blackboard, teachers would build in a master course template or sort of a blank shell, and then they would copy that to the classes that were generated by our student management system. And it was sort of cumbersome and inefficient for teachers. And uh, they, would, they would build a course, copy it to their student section, and then when they went to add something to it, they, they couldn't, at a granular level, add copy content from one class to another for a variety of reasons. And 
we went. We actually asked Blackboard about this, and this is a Blackboard world. Uh, we just inquired, and finally um, learned a lot more about parent courses and merge enrollments. And this is a huge factor for success, I would say. If I were launching a district for the first time with Blackboard, um, understanding what parent courses and merge enrollments can do for you is would be a fantastic way to get started. In fact, since we learned about this tool. One, we've been able to take down roadblock. You know, before teachers would complain that, oh, well, this is inefficient. It's taking me more time to build the course and, and add new content to the course. Um, but by unlocking uh, the parent course option and the merge enrollments option, built within the courses, there are other ways you can do it as well. This really gave um, teachers the ability to build on the fly and add and be dynamic with their content. And this has been just such a huge benefit for teachers in our district. And uh, there were people before who were not using Blackboard and now they're using Blackboard because they, they've shifted um, to these parent courses. So it's been great for us. The next thing is, is instead of just relying on YouTube and Blackboard video tutorials, you might want to consider building your own video tutorials. Uh, every Blackboard video tutorial we, we went to look at, you know, obviously looked different. The interface was a little bit different. And so for us, we focused on building some really short but powerful video tutorials that, that reviewed and taught the basics for us. And for us, basics would be uh, adding content items, adding folders, and adding assignments in the beginning. Those are sort of the big three that we start with so teachers can create their blended learning environment. But these are some things that definitely have helped us uh, in moving forward. I'm going to share some of what we've been doing in this in this training. Okay. So over the course of the last year, our departments worked on developing a training in which teachers come for a full day, and they they basically are students in the course. And we go through a process of using Blackboard. They, we created a self-enrolling organization where you can do a self-enrolling class. Uh, and in this case, we set up a, a training that models an in-class flip, which allows us to talk about, talk about flipped learning. So teachers pretty much come in. There's a little bit of discussion. Instead of talking for the next you know, eight hours, we jump right in. We break them into groups. And, and we model an in-class flip. And, in this first portion of the learning, teachers are going to learn about blended theory. So they see we have several learning objects that are built in for blended theory. Some videos, there's a couple articles um, about different shapes of blended. And then um, we also have been really pushing the SAMR model in our district. Um, the uh, Dr. Ruben pointed to uh, draw. This, this SAMR model is, is, is another way to get teachers thinking about how, how is technology impacting their, their classroom. You know, if it's, is it at a substitution level or are they doing something more substantial and significant with it? And by thinking about how they're using technology, it can help them sort of uh, plan and look forward to what they might want to do to extend what uh, they're doing with technology in a blended environment. We also have to talk about uh, copyright. You know, our teachers are adding tons of things to Blackboard, and they really get excited when they find out how to add, how simple it is to add things for their students. But one of the things we wanted to show with teachers is, hey, you know, there are some copyright considerations that you should be aware of, and we're, by being great models of copyright, as, as teachers, we're all cannibals, and we've all been guilty of probably cannibalizing more than we should and claiming fair use. You know, by, by modeling um, some best practices with copyright, then you could start to have an impact on students when they start to build projects and build work that they're going to be turning in in the long run. So this in-class flip uh, houses several interactive learning objects, videos, and articles. But it's also set up with some companion activities. And I'm going to share some pictures of this in a minute. But um, we, we have digital activities, and then also analog activities, so you can sort of model this in-class flip. And it's also a great place to talk about um, the lack of technology, which is a hurdle for teachers a lot of times. Um, when we talk to the teachers, uh, a lot of times we'll say, but, but Jason, I can't get a card every day. I can't, I don't have access to technology. How do I really do this? And, you know, there, there's not always a perfect answer for everybody, but A, we always tell teachers, 
you got to start signing up for computers. You've got to try to get them. Administrators want to see people using technology, and they're looking for, you know, examples of it. But I think the other thing is, is that you don't necessarily have to have a classroom set to be able to create a station rotation or an in-class flip. And the other thing, too, is if you, um, with, with flipping, a lot of times, you know, teachers will have a, an adverse reaction to it because they, they're very much uh, of the nature that students, you know, if I put something online and they have to learn about it at home, they don't have computers at home. Or they're not going to do it. Uh, or, you know, it's sort of, again, that class half full mentality. But it's one of the things just from experience that, you know, I, as a teacher I experienced was as a teacher, it's always about how engaging the content is. It's about how engaging the environment you're creating is. And the more engaging it is, you'd be surprised that there's a residual effect of that. So uh, a lot of times we didn't always have computers, but I, I suggest to teachers get, get computers, launch the activity, do, do everything in class. You might have to do that for the first several times you attempt this. Uh, they may not go at home and do any of this at home, but over time, if you're persistent and, you, and, and the content you're making available and the learning experiences uh, you're, you're making available to students are, are engaging and they're rewarding and, and they're meaningful, then students will go out of their way to, to get to this content outside of school. And what's so fantastic about Blackboard is you have this blank canvas with all of these interactive tools and you can virtually add almost anything to a course. Um, it's just really your creative brain that kind of limits you uh, in setting up what it is that you want to do. So we definitely, uh, we, we try to show that with this in-class flip. We, we do everything right in the session with, you know, a limited amount of computers to sort of model that. And they walk out um, after doing the, the uh, digital activities. We also have several analog activities, and I'll show some of those. After the in-class flip, which is a good chunk of our morning session, we jump into a station rotation. And this is, now that we've talked about blended theory, and, and we've actually you know, done a, a, an in-class flip and sort of a station rotation, the teachers t typically tend to be pretty excited, and they want to know, how do I do that? And so, uh, as I said earlier, when we first started teaching about Blackboard in the district, we were, we were really trying to show everything. And uh, we've since pared back. We've scaled back a lot. Um, now we try to look at what, what is going to give teachers the biggest bang for their buck. And talking about structuring and, and adding organizing content, adding a folder, adding a content item, and adding and grading an assignment, we think are key building blocks for teachers. And to model these, in the morning session, we, we've, we've essentially used the first two. Everything up here is in a folder. All of them are content items, so we, we've kind of, they've had experience as a student using these. And after we go through these rotations, which we created videos for each of these and sort of companion PDF guides, um, and one of the stations is typically one of us, one of the instructional designers, kind of talking about how this looks in a classroom. We, um, we then, the, the reflection, the exit ticket is, they actually complete an assignment as a student. Now, there are a lot of teachers who have never had a, a class in Blackboard Learn. And uh, for some of them, it's the first time they've ever, you know, turned in an assignment in Learn. And even for some of the people who have had experience with Learn in the past, while they're at lunch, we, we grade the feedback or the reflections with all the, the inline grading tools. And I would say the assignment tool has just gotten better and better in Blackboard. The new safe site integration is fantastic. Uh, we try to, I try to mark those papers up and model every tool you could use. And, and when they come back from lunch, we, they open up their, their assignment and they see the feedback. And then I intentionally leave a few papers ungraded and go through and show them what the buttons do to make the feedback. We talk about some of the, some of the great aspects of the assignment feature, the ability to unlock additional terms, the, the ability to, um, to, to keep feedback over time and to show a learning progression or evidence of learning for a student, for an administrator or parents, the ability to put links and feedback. Um, it, and we also show the BD grading app. If you have not used the BD grader app for iOS, it's also a, a really cool new feature. So I would strongly suggest uh, you checking that out if you've not seen it. The uh, 
It also allows you to put audio comments on, on assignments for students. So after after lunch, they come back, they've participated in an in-class flip, they've learned about blended theory, SAMR, copyright, they've, they've learned a little bit how to build, we've given them some feedback, so now they've experienced this tool that can be used in so many ways. We then kind of open up the options in the afternoon. We've got a flex menu set up, and it's basically almost like many web quests where we've created a little uh, sort of structured lesson that they can spend some time working with. And uh, they they can go into learning more about creating flip lessons with OERs or using the discussion board a little bit more or structuring classrooms. You know, we, we have several different options. Paperless classroom is kind of a popular one. And we have this time in the afternoon for them to actually create. We've got some deliverables set up for this time. We also then give teachers with sort of the end of the day just a little time to debrief and touch base um, and to do what they need to do and kind of decompress and, and, and think about everything that we learned. And so far, the feedback we've gotten in the workshop is we, we have, it's been fantastic. And I think a lot of that goes back to what I said earlier. We're really trying to shift from just sit and get to actually jumping in. In fact, I almost feel strange talking for, you know, 45 minutes on a webinar right now because it, it's it's – really pretty powerful when you get teacher watching teachers run through some of these activities. So let me share just a couple. I'm going to switch to, to the screen sharing application and I'm going to share my desktop to share a couple of uh, images with you guys. All right. Let me highlight these. Oops. You guys seeing this? Okay, so this uh, this first one, obviously, we talked a lot about blended here, but I think this can't be understated, and that is, what is blended learning going to look like for you as a teacher, and really, what is it going to look like for you as, as an administration and even as a district? You know, we've kind of identified what we're looking for, but it's going to look different everywhere, and I think that's another thing that trips teachers up from time to time. It, it's definitely going to look different, but what's awesome about having Blackboard as a platform is that really it's your creativity. You you have to define what it's going to be for you, but uh, don't let a lack of technology stop you. And and also, um, you know, figure out you know, figure out you have to figure out what's best for you and your students. This this next shot is sort of us as we're kind of deciding how we're going to set this workshop up. And, and you can see different deliverables. And we got a little blended classroom, and I'll show you what that is in just a second. But we, in, in planning this, we, we very much talk to teachers about, you know, the, the constant revision process. And, and in the session, we're able to sort of model how they can use Blackboard to teach out of in a blended environment. And I think that that more than anything else has been, uh, again, modeling blended learning with Blackboard has been one of the keys to helping teachers to think differently about Blackboard um, and to see more of what blended learning might be. In fact, you know, a lot of times towards the end of the day, I say, okay, now, we were using Blackboard. And a lot of times, you know, if I start the session at the beginning of the day and I say, you know, what's Blackboard for? A lot of people say, oh, that's online classes. That's online teaching. And... You know, at the end of the day, I ask the same question, and, and they're like, oh, you, that's not an online class. You, you kind of use that, and you use it as a base, and we did all sorts of different things out of it. You know, all of our content was there. That was really cool. That, that would give you control over time, place, pace, and path, some of the things we talked about. Um, and, you know, they have to almost see that uh, you can use Blackboard in, in the face-to-face -face classroom in a blended way. And, and I think the more you can model that for teachers, the better. You know, I'm an old history teacher. I, I, if I was going to lecture, I'd put a PowerPoint, I'd probably pull it off my desktop, open it up, and, and teach it to the class, okay? Well, instead of doing that, you know, with Blackboard, I still put my PowerPoint in there. I don't launch it from my desktop now. Any student can launch it from any computer device that has an Internet connection. And... I don't have to lecture to the whole class. I can lecture to a small group while another group is looking at 
maybe some videos that I have set up or maybe doing an interactive uh, activity that I've got set up in another part of my course. So it's one thing for someone who, who, who engages in blended learning to talk about that and do that. But it's another thing for teachers, again, who have, who have, who don't have the experience using Blackboard to do that. And I think that's where if you're going to um, work with teachers or if you're going to try to get teachers to use Blackboard in a variety of ways, then, then again, modeling is definitely a way to, to share what that, to, to sort of share how that would look for them and then give them some ideas. Here, uh, this is another sort of sketch of us planning. And, you know, these are like our folders in Blackboard. We've got digital, uh, we have blended models. This is, this is just a folder housing videos. Folder housing content on SAMR. Folder with, we have an infographic and a couple of other things. But as you can see, this next row here are analog activities. And so the complete in-class flip takes us about, takes us about two hours. We really take our time and go through it and make sure everyone understands, uh, what's going on. And then we also kind of debrief. But so far we've, we just had some great, um, feedback from teachers. Also at the beginning of every session, we are a PBL district. Uh, so we work with the Buck Institute, and, and our driving question for this continuing PD is, how can we plan slash build effective blended learning environments for our students? And we, we open the day with that, and we actually now do this digitally. Sometimes we do it in an analog manner like this, writing on the board. Sometimes we embed, you know, other products that we use in the district to take surveys and things like that. You can also do it from Blackboard survey tool or uh, just Blackboard assignment tool. But I think it's interesting to take a look at this shot and, and see what, what are teachers. This is the beginning of the day at a session where they're coming to learn about blended learning environments. And here are some of the things that teachers are saying they need to know. What are the basics that students need to know for them to get more out of blended learning? This is a huge one. I haven't even touched on this, but students themselves, if they're going to be in a new blended learning environment, there's some things that you're going to have to show them. You know, you got to create a routine. They got to know to go to the computer to log in, and 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 that here's what interactive activities look like, and, and what they're going to look like in your classroom. So, one great suggestion is creating a little blended or tech or blackboard boot camp at the beginning of whatever time you're teaching, beginning of the semester, beginning of the year, and making sure you run through some practices with these skills. It's like anything else; practice makes perfect. The next thing. Um, and both of these kind of concerns students. The teachers, they, they say they need help with building in Blackboard. Are there a bank, can we create a bank of resources? Could we monitor their computers? These are all some, some other things. But what's interesting to me is that oftentimes teachers say, one of the questions that comes up in the need to know is what is blended learning? What does it look like? And, you know, I think Blackboard is an online environment, but then you're telling me to do blended learning in my classroom. So, so again, that's where the, sort of blended PD is so vital and so precious. So um, this next image I have here, these are some teachers actually participating in one of the stations. Uh, they have some digital flashcards here, and they also have some analog, and they're having a discussion about, you know, there's some SAMR scenarios that we've got printed out, um, and they're sort of considering what, what these might be. Lastly, we also decided that um, this would be kind of fun, and, and one analog activity that I would definitely you know, suggest you might want to try with teachers is we, what we did is we created a, sort of a, a blended architecture set. And we created a bunch of icons for anything that you could imagine from iPads. We have every device you can imagine here. We have 30 computers, 35 computers, 35 laptops, 35 iPads, phones. We have microscopes, calculators, lots of furniture. And the, the dots you see in this image are students. They have different colors that teachers could group students the way they want to group them. And after they learn about blended theory in the in-class flip, they have to come to the station and they have to sort of design a blended lesson. And then they have to write a narrative or create a presentation in the PD that sort of ex is explaining what's going on. There are also tags to show what, what type of uh, model they're, they're using. And, and in the end, really, it's their explanation and how they make meaning of it that's the most important thing. We even have houses that are for outside if they want to do more flip learning. But what's really interesting is to, this is where they put that into practice. You know, instead of just saying, I'm going to build an assignment on Blackboard, 
that's great. Okay, so let's build the assignment in Blackboard, but what's that going to look like in your physical classroom space? And this particular activity has been a great one for teachers to sort of get their heads wrapped around what this actually looks like with their students. So, um, again, all we did was put together the icons. We, we had to cut them out and laminate them. But it's been a great tool, and we've had lots of teachers who are PD trainers in their building say, hey, can we do that? We would like to do that. That really seems like a great activity. And for some teachers, this is they, they said this has really helped them uh, make sense of, you know, that basically apply that blended learning model to their own situation. So anyway, uh, those are a few pictures. Go back to sorry. All right. Katie, how are you doing on time? We're great. We've got eight minutes to go. Um, okay, I'd like to show the, the, I mean, we can take some questions, or I, I would love to show some of the PD, if that's possible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, questions can come in at any time, so if there are any in the chat, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. If it's you like, have um, please add questions in the chat. Yeah, cool. Um, let's go. Okay, let me go. Wait, I'm having a problem. Uh, I need to get to my browser, but maybe. Okay, you should my Safari be in the uh, sharing options? Yes. Or should that be, would that be web tour? It would be under sharing, but you may need to make sure the application is not minimized before you go to start sharing. Oh, that's, that's exactly what it is. Thank you. Yep, that's it. All right. Can you see this? Yep. Okay. So, I mean, as you can see, we, we started using uh, Blackboard organizations. I mean, you can do this with a course as well. So um, what's really great about this is we, we house, we, we put all of our training materials in. We, we kind of make it look like a class. And we just have it be self-enrolling. So when people come into the PD, we show them how to enroll and they come in. And, and we have some additional resources. What's awesome about this is, is as we start to launch into the blended activities, we're totally modeling how starting to put content into Blackboard and, and starting to consider how you might use it in your classroom can benefit you and all right away put students in the blended arena. And, uh, you know, we have people who are not at the session, unable, unable to attend or late to the session. Well, if it was kind of the old sit and get PD, we'd have to, you know, give them the handouts and, and someone would have to come and explain to them. But, again, the beauty of putting this stuff online is now it's, we can shift it around. I can say, hey, uh, go, go into the content resources and just walk them to the resources, and and I can kind of start down a custom path while everyone is doing other things. It, it's it's great. And even if someone missed the session, they could almost follow along from home uh, with a little bit of help. And especially in a classroom, when you're when you're doing more blending and it becomes part of the culture of the classroom, students know that. You know, at first. A lot of them may say, oh, I don't want to do this, or no, I, this is, okay, that's cool and all. But but the more you do it, and it's sort of the field of dreams and mentality, you, if you build it, they will come. The more you make what's there meaningful and relevant and engaging, the more they're going to go to it. I was shocked when I started pulling reports in my classes and seeing the times at which students were posting content and the times at which they were accessing. So... The same kids who would say that, oh, I don't, I, I don't really want to do this, or, or that's fine, I probably won't use it, Th those same kids are logging in at all hours. So it's pretty interesting. I, another thing, too, is that students, you know, I had students who would say day one, like just squarely, look me in the eye and say, no, nah, that's cool, Mr. Beal, but I, I'm not doing that. You know, and, and then two or three or four days later, as they see the class, then the culture start to be, or using this blended model or doing some station rotation and then these kids are talking about getting the resources outside the classroom, you know, the same student come up and say, hey, 
how do I get in there or how do I do that or I need some help? And so, you know, I've seen that happen in the classroom. It's pretty powerful. The uh, organization here, as you can see, we've got some information and we just kind of, again, model the teachers what this might look like. So this might be your syllabus and we have some of our information. And then uh, when we get in here, you can see creating your blended learning environment. You can see all, it, it's, a, it's a series of um, items and folders. We try not to build every feature that Blackboard has into this training because it is sort of our initial entry level blended learning training. We're currently developing some advanced sessions, which is pretty exciting. But, you know, we have things uh, where we're using additional district tools. This is a survey that's launched from Office 365. And teachers actually have access to these tools, but they oftentimes don't see them. How, how are they going to use these tools with students? So we kind of use them as tools for them to be students with. You can see uh, here's our agenda. And what's kind of cool about this is that it's digital and it's paper. We, we give them paper copies and analog copies and try to model, you know, do both in the beginning and, and do both as much as you can. But the more you start to at any time, if they lose it or destroy it or et cetera. So you can see sort of our in-class flip. We have a little note for the trainer or teacher here. And again, we, we've, what's great about this is we've selected these videos and we try to show teachers that once you get this content in here and it's some really good content, uh, you can do all sorts of things with it. And this content will be here when we start teaching the class again next year. So uh, it, it, you start small, start building a digital package, and start doing some of these things. Um, and in the end, you're, you're going to have a lot more control and a lot more, uh, so many more options with students in terms of learning. Um, a lot of times it comes out in the training, but you know, when you start to put two or three options for, for teachers in the training and say, go ahead, you pick the one you want, you're just modeling you know, some, some different ways to differentiate. And, and teachers are oftentimes so appreciative of going through, you know, having, being the beneficiary of some of these strategies you know, that should say something definitely to going back to your students and saying, yeah, that, that training was engaging, it was fun, it went fast, it was interesting. Well, then, then take what you've learned and, and just try to, try to put some of these ideas in play with some of the content that you're teaching the students. Um, going back here. So, as I, as I said earlier, we, we also have a couple of other things, uh, a couple of resources, our video tutorials, and, and links to resources for help. One thing we also, I would, I would definitely talk to teachers about if you're training teachers or working with teachers uh, and showing them how you might use this in a blended environment is one of the great things about Blackboard is you don't have to show all your cards. You know, a lot of times if, if you had a web page or if you, you were sending kids to a website, they click on something and there are all these other links to click on. And of course they're online so they can go and they can click on other things as well. But what I love about Blackboard is I can hide things. You know, when we start this training, the only thing that I actually have showing are these two. All of these are hidden. And, and again, you know, just go in and edit and, and, and do not permit users to see the content. And basically, you know, we try to talk to teachers about that. Look, keep your kids focused. You know, don't show all your cards in the beginning. You can determine when they see this content, and that can be throughout the day as we go through it. So, you know, by simply turning some switches on and off, you can do some interesting things. And, and you know, I think in the end, it, it really is, if, if you want to get students to take a risk in learning, you got to get teachers to take a risk in learning. And, um, you know, we challenge them to, to jump into this blended environment. And i got to say, it's been really rewarding thus far. And we're really looking forward to continue to develop trainings that are sort of modeled, that, that model these blended strategies using Blackboard. So, um, so this has that's... Been, um, this has been really helpful, Jason. This has been great. Um, and I know this is a topic of really high interest for a lot of folks. Um, if I can, I'm going to take control back over because we're right at yep. time. Um, yep. But we're going to ask for additional questions in the chat as we wrap up here. So thanks everyone for participating today. This has been a great session. We love comments, questions, and feedback um, in the chat. But uh, just a reminder that registration is open for Blackboard World. We'd love for you to consider joining. Um, Jason presented last year and did a fabulous job. Um, 
and you know, remind you to please join us again next Monday, um, where we will be taking a look at. Um, let's see. Uh, blending um, within math instruction. Um, so please join us Monday. So um, with that, are there any other questions? Please uh, type them in the chat. There's a thank you from Anne, uh, but she's looking forward to catching the recording. Uh, but please give us any other questions that you have, because I know we're already a minute past time. All right. Thank you so much, Jason. This has been great. Yeah, I, I hope I didn't, I didn't ramble too much. Oh, no. Um, no, not at all. The uh, well, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity, and uh, like I said, I mean, this call is no longer being.